the universe is a very exciting topic to talk about. Everybody has a different view about what the universe is. From the ancient times to the modern time, people still wonder as to which theory about the universe is to be accepted as truth or the more logical. You have studied different philosophies but they seem not to agree with one another when it comes to the model of the universe. Of course, it is safe to accept the models backed up by observations and experiments in science. What does our solar system really look like? If we were to somehow fly ourselves above the plane where the sun and the planets are, what would we see in the center of the solar system? Hello everyone, this is April Joy Mabuyao, and I will present to you the models of the universe. Before the telescope was invented, Ancient astronomers only used their unaided eyes to observe the sky and the stars. Eventually, they created the models of the universe. The answers took a while for astronomers to figure out, leading to a debate between what is known as the geocentric or the Earth-centered model and the heliocentric or the Sun-centered model. A pupil of Plato, Eudoxus elaborated a geocentric model composed of crystalline spheres, incorporating the platonic ideal of uniform circular motion. According to him, the universe has 27 concentric spheres with Earth as center. The system of 27 spheres includes 1 for the fixed stars, 3 for the sun and moon, and 4 each for the 5 planets. Spheres within the spheres in perfect circular motion combine to give retrograde motions. The sun and the planets were placed in a giant transparent spheres that orbit the Earth. The sun's spheres orbit the Earth every 24 hours. Stars are attached to a larger and much further spheres. For the four spheres for each planet, one is aligned with the celestial poles, turning once a day to give rising and setting. Second was tilted 23.5 degrees, rotated slowly in the opposite direction to give the usual west to east drift of the planets relative to the fixed stars. Third and fourth were introduced to produce the periodic retrograde motions of the planets. When we say retrograde motion, it is an apparent change in the movement of the planet through the sky. During the 300s BC, the philosopher Aristotle accepted and added to this Earth-centered geometric model. This model showed that the universe was spherical and infinite. He perceived the Earth was at the center of the universe and was stationary. Motion of the celestial bodies can be traced to a prime mover, but because of its basic movement, all other crystalline spheres move accordingly. The model created by Aristotle was a part of multiple examples described as the geocentric model. His model has a total of 55 objects in his idea of the universe. At the center of the universe laid Earth. From the center to the farthest exterior, the objects were as follows. Earth, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Past Saturn, stars were in a fixed position. The interesting part is if we change the position of the Earth and the Sun, then bring the Moon to Earth, it would be pretty similar to our current model. This model and many like it lasted until the 16th century CE, 
Aristotle's universe gradually ended near the stars. The stars were the line between the universe seen by man. Past the stars laid spiritual space where mankind could never go. Aristarchus was a great astronomer who made the first attempt to create a heliocentric model, which places the sun at the center of the universe. He proposed that the sun and the fixed stars were at rest, which Earth revolves around the sun in a circular path. He was the first person to calculate the relative distances of the Earth and the sun using trigonometry. Aristarchus attempted to calculate the relative distance between the Earth and the Sun. He did this by measuring the angle between the Moon and the Sun during a half-moon and using trigonometry. Aristarchus concluded that the Sun is about 20 times further away than the Moon and must be about 20 times larger. This is because the Moon and the Sun appear to be the same size. This is most evident during the solar eclipses when the moon blacks out the sun completely. He visualized that the moon orbits around the spherical earth, which then revolves around the sun. It is sometimes said there was pressure for Aristarchus to be put on trial for daring to say the earth is not at the center of the universe. There was no persecution of Aristarchus. His idea just didn't find many fans. Most ancient Greeks rejected his work and continued to believe in a geocentric solar system. The only work of Aristarchus that survived was entitled On the Sizes and Distances of the Sun and the Moon. In this book, Aristarchus calculated the sizes of the Sun and the Moon and their distances from Earth by estimating the relative angles of the Moon and the Sun from the Earth. He had three assumptions. The first one, Earth was spherical. Second, it is far from the sun. And lastly, the third, Moon passes through Earth's shadows when they align. Ptolemy developed Aristotle's geocentric theory of the universe in about 150 CE. Ptolemy knew that the planets don't appear to orbit in perfect circles around the Earth. Some planets, like Mars, even appear to move backwards before moving forward again in large loops. Ptolemy suggested that planets like Mars move in circles as they orbit the Earth, where the circles are called epicycles. In this model, it is assumed that Earth was at the center of the universe, while the other celestial bodies revolve around the Earth in perfect circles with constant velocity. Ptolemy's model was considered more defined than the previous geocentric models because his model could explain the motion of the celestial bodies accurately. Ptolemy assumed that the planets revolve in epicycles, which move around the different. He added that the stars belong to the celestial sphere, which was located beyond the planetary sphere. Copernicus received the heliocentric model of Aristarchus. He believed that planets only travel in perfect circles, and so his heliocentric model needed a similar amount of epicycles to explain their observed motions. Copernicus strongly believed in the heliocentric theory model because there were loopholes in the Ptolemaic model in terms of predicting the position of the planets. According to him, heavenly bodies exhibited constant circular and perpetual motion along their epicycles, and the sun was at the center of the solar system. He also believed that the order of the planets from the sun is Mercury, Venus, Earth and the Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and beyond the planets were the fixed stars. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus published his famous book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. He told us that Earth and all the other planets orbit the Sun. In other words, he said the solar system is heliocentric. Until Copernicus published his work, people thought we lived in a geocentric solar system. 
They believe the moon, the planets, the sun, and the stars orbited the Earth. The geocentric idea was taught by the Catholic Church, and Copernicus was a Catholic. Copernicus' book was suppressed by the Church, but gradually his theory came to be accepted. However, Copernicus was rather late coming to the heliocentric view. Aristarchus beat him by 18 centuries. Unlike Copernicus, Brahe believed in a geocentric universe, but his idea of the geocentric universe is slightly different from Ptolemy's. His model is called Tychomic System. According to his model, Earth was at the center and the Sun and the Moon revolved around it, and all the other planets orbited the Sun. Such a model was a type of geoheliocentric system. In both Tychonic and Ptolemaic systems, the outer sphere containing the fixed stars was considered to revolve every day around the Earth. In 1609, Galileo built his first telescope and began making observations of the heavenly bodies. His observations weakened the support for the geocentric Ptolemaic model of the universe. His discovery of sunspots on the Sun, which confirms that the Sun rotates and the planets orbit around the Sun and not around the Earth. The night sky has been a subject of human curiosity from the earliest civilizations on Earth. From the Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Indus, all had a fascination for the celestial objects and the elite of intellectuals built theories to explain the miracles of the heavens. Earlier, they were accepted to be from the gods, and later the explanation took more logical and scientific forms. However, it was not until the Greeks developed the proper theories about the earth and the rotation of the planets emerged. Heliocentric and geocentric are two explanations of the arrangement of the universe, including the solar system.